The main topic here is generating pulse width modulation signals from the AVR microcontroller and we're going to look at this briefly in the context of DC motor control. So the topics are include a very cursory look at DC motors and how to use them and then we'll jump into generating PWM with the ATA Mega. We're going to also cover just the basics of what is pulse width modulation. So here's a DC motor and if we supply voltage to the armature then the current will generate a torque and cause rotation of the motor. If we were to change the polarity of the voltage then the motor would turn in the opposite direction. So here is one way that we could turn on a motor with an AVR one of our GPI opens could be connected to the base of a bipolar junction transform transistor like this. We could protect our microcontroller by including optical isolation and get a system that looks sort of like this and definitely want to include the flyback diode. So conceptually we can get bidirectional control by switching if we have two of the switches closed, one and four, then we'll get current that, say, makes the motor turn clockwise. If we open those switches and close the other two, then current is going the opposite direction and the motor turns in the opposite direction. So this is a representation of how an H-bridge works. The state where all the switches are closed is invalid because it would just bypass the motor with a short circuit. We know from looking at DC motors in previous videos that at steady state the speed is proportional to the voltage. And here is a typical torque speed curve for a motor. What would probably be more useful would be a speed voltage curve. And so the speed would, as speed increased, the voltage would increase. But anyway, you can see from this plot that at a given load torque, as you change the voltage, you're going to change the speed. And it's not really apparent from this chart that it's linear, but if you were to revisit the steady state equation that produced this chart, you could see that speed is proportional to voltage. So if we want to control the motor speed at steady state, we can affect that by controlling the voltage. And we could also control the motor speed not at steady state, but that requires knowledge of control systems, which is outside the scope of this video. So just talking about controlling the motor speed using voltage, there are a couple ways to change the voltage input to the motor. We could use amplifier, but a uh, downside of that is that it wastes power. And so what we'll look at is pulse width modulation. This is an efficient means of controlling the average voltage to the motor. These three plots show different examples of pulse width modulation with what's called different duty cycles. So the idea here is instead of continuously varying the voltage amplitude, what we do instead is send pulses of voltage, so turn the voltage on to high and off to low at regular intervals, and the ratio of the amount of time that the voltage is high to the amount of time that it's low determines the average voltage. So the ratio between the pulse width and the period is known as the duty cycle and that's in a range of 0 to 100 percent. Now the pulse, I'm sorry, the period is constant for our PWM. So the pulse is delivered at the same interval no matter what the duty cycle is. What changes and what gives us different V average is the duty cycle, so the, the amount of time that the voltage is high relative to the period. Now, we can generate pulse width modulation signals from the AVR microcontrollers. They have built-in hardware for producing this, and we're going to look at how that's done. Most of the slides in this video 
are directly applicable to the AT Mega 32. The concepts are universal, but the special function register names and bit names are particular to the AT Mega 32. Now, if we are generating a PWM signal, we're using the timer, and the timer is operating similar to normal mode, the at least for the AT Mega 32. So the the timer counter will go up from zero up to 255, and then go back to zero and up to 255. We'll do that continuously. So it it operates like normal mode. One difference is that the output compare register is buffered. So here we're talking about using timer zero. So its output compare register zero is buffered. That means when we write a value, it's going to go to the OCR zero buffer. And whenever the count goes from 255 to zero, then the value will be put into the OCR zero register. Now, in a way, using the timer in fast PWM mode is also like CTC mode from the timer, in that we're going to be using the comparator and the results of the comparator, comparing TCNT0 and OCR0. The difference between fast PWM mode and CTC mode is that fast P PWM mode, the voltage, or r rather the value of the OC0 bit is set or reset upon match. So instead of generating an interrupt, we're going to set or reset this bit, which whenever we have an actuator would correspond to a voltage on a specific pin, the OC0 pin. So you can see the counter goes up from 0 to 255 just like in normal mode. And we'll look a little bit later at more of what happens w when that compare match occurs with the OC output compare pin. So that's this slide. This again is showing the microcontroller in fast PWM mode. There's also a phase correct PWM mode, but just to keep the concept straight we're only going to look at fast PWM. And which mode the timer is operating in is determined by the value in the WGM bits, the waveform generation mode bits. So if they're in fast PWM mode, then the timer counter register is going to look like this. It's going to have this sawtooth form. And then the compare output mode bits determine whether the signal is not inverting PWM or inverting PWM. So the OC0 bit in non-inverting PWM is set whenever the counter register gets to the top, and then it's reset whenever the there's a match between the output compare register and the timer counter register. So in non-inverting PWM mode, to increase the duty cycle, one would increase the value in the output compare register, as you can see here. So that means that there's a longer time that the voltage on the pin is high, or that this bit is high. Here is an equation for figuring out the duty cycle, or relating the duty cycle to the output compare register value for timer 0 in uh, AT Mega 32. There's also inverting PWM, so that's another option depending on the values in the COM bits. Inverting PWM just gives an inverted value for this bit. So whenever the counter reaches top, that bit is cleared, and whenever a match occurs, that bit is set. One result of this is that as the output compare register value increases, the duty cycle decreases for inverting PWM. Now, these two figures, equations, deal with the duty cycle. We can also vary the frequency of PWM, and we might want to do that based on the dynamics of the actuator. One easy example is that different frequencies can generate audible whines, and so that PWM frequency can be determined by the CPU frequency divided by the product of the prescaler and 256. So this is for the AT Mega 32. On the AT Mega 328, for example, there are even more possible PWM frequencies. 
you see on the 32, you have a limited choice because there are only a few prescaler values. Um, different microcontrollers have a wider range of, or more possible uh, PWM frequencies, but we're not going to get into that either because we want to just get through the main topics in PWM. So you can see how, hopefully from this slide, the timer is used to generate a pulse width modulation signal. The, the timer counter register is going from 0 to 255 and back, and whenever a compare match is occurs, the voltage on the out output compare pin is changed or is toggled. And so depending on the value in the output compare register, we're going to have different duty cycle. Another way to look at that is shown here, and these are from the data sheet for the AT Mega 328. Again, some of the names are different, but the concepts are the same. We have the timer counter register. It's being compared to the output compare register. Whenever there's a match, Depending on the values in the waveform generation mode bits and the compare output mode bits, the voltage at the output compare pin is changed. And for the 328, you can see there are six different output compare pins, so OC2B, OC0B, um, mm, yeah, two for each timer. This table shows the operation mode that corresponds to different compare output mode bits. And there are three different scenarios, whether the waveform generator is in CTC or normal. So if we're just using the timer or the counter as a timer, if we're in fast PWM mode or if we're in phase correct PWM mode. So fast PWM, if you want non-inverting PWM, that's where OC, OC0 is cleared on compare match and set at top, then we want 1, 0 in these bits. If we want inverting PWM, then we need 1, 1 in these bits. So here's an example, and this pretty much wraps up the presentation. Say we have a microcontroller, I guess uh, an AT Mega 32, with an 8 megahertz clock frequency. How do we configure it to generate the following pulse? One with a 75% duty cycle, a PWM frequency of 31 and a quarter kilohertz, and non-inverting PWM. So first of all, let's look at the PWM frequency. Here's an equation relating that to the CPU frequency and the prescaler value. So we'll solve for the prescaler value, and we end up with one for that. So in other words, whenever we have one eighth of a microsecond in between increments in our counter, it takes 31, well it takes 32 microseconds to count up to 256. Well that might not have been an illustrative point to make. But anyhow, if we wanted to get this PWM frequency, then we have a prescaler value of one for this clock frequency. Now we need to know what value to put in the output compare register in order to get a duty cycle of 75%. So here again is a re an equation relating output compare register to duty cycle. Rearrange to solve for output compare register, we get 190. So for our program in C, we could assign 190 to OCR0 and the hex value of 69 to TCCR0. So let's look at the next slide to see how we came up with this value. First of all, the clock selector bits, um, we want 001 for no prescaling. So those are the three least significant bits. So you can see 001 here. Next, the WGM bits, so the waveform generation mode bits. We want fast PWM, so 11, one, one. so bits 6 and 4, uh, bits 6 and 3, um, both have 1s. So bit six, bit three. And now the COM bits. Oh, COM bits were in the previous slide. So we said we want one, one in those. So 
we have 0, B, 0, 1, oops, 1, 0 for the convents in order to have non-inverting PWM. And in hex, that's 69.